At the risk of offending any samosa lovers, the Kolkata samosa or shingara is the ultimate samosa. The pastry is incredibly flaky due to the profuse addition of ghee and the filling intensely flavorful with a hint of spiciness. If you love samosas, you have to try this version. The flakiness of the pastry is due to the addition of ghee. The ghee needs to be rubbed with the flour in between your fingers to coat the flour molecules that creates the flakiness once you shape and fry the dough. Add water little by little. We want the dough to be on the tighter side and don't knead it too much. I've scrubbed the potatoes clean because I want to leave the skin on. The skin adds a deeper potato flavor and a lovely texture that is characteristic of this Kolkata samosa. Crushing the ginger and chili in the mortar and pestle brings out their maximum flavor. It's important to cook the filling in mustard oil. It adds a classic flavor to this dish that is hard to replicate with any other cooking medium, so try to source it if you can. Pach Porun is a characteristic Bengali spice and it's a mix of five different whole spices. Once the fenugreek seeds turn bright orange, you know it's ready for the ginger chili paste. Next, we add in all the ground spices. Keep the heat on low so the spices don't burn and add a splash of water if needed. This smells so familiar. I par-cooked the potatoes and saved the water that I boiled them in. Add a little bit of sugar to balance out the spiciness from the cream chilies. Since the potatoes were par-cooked, they won't take that long to cook. We don't want them to turn into mush. We still want them to retain the shape. Add some kasuri methi to finish. And don't forget to add the peanuts that we fried earlier. They're a very important component. We need to cool this filling completely before the samosas can be stuffed. So I lay them out on a flat plate, which allows them to cool to room temperature much quicker.
In my previous samosa video, I've shared an in-depth guide to folding these Kolkata style samosas. So I won't bore you with the details again. I'll link that video in the description. I've made enough dough for four samosas today. You can double, triple, quadruple the recipe depending on how many samosas you're making. Autumn in Kolkata is time for the biggest festival in the city, and there is an air of joy, excitement and celebration that can't be experienced anywhere else. Preparations begin months in advance, and I remember these moments as the happiest times during my childhood. They also provided the perfect excuse to eat as many shingaras as I wanted. to seal the edges. Make sure the edges are properly sealed because you don't want your samosas to unravel while you're frying them. It's also important not to overstuff these shingaras, otherwise they might burst while frying. And you want that perfect ratio of filling to pastry. There are no peas in this filling like the Punjabi samosa, and the addition of peanuts is key. Some of the spices I used are specific to the region, and the mustard oil adds a distinct flavor. should be able to smell the key while eating these samosas and the pastry should flake off in your hands. The filling is slightly sweet but the green chili balances it out so well. The peanuts may sound strange but are surprisingly good. folding technique creates multiple layers which allows for maximum flakiness. It also ensures that your samosa can sit upright when you put them on a flat surface. key to get that smooth golden pastry that is cooked through is to fry it at a low temperature for a long time. You shouldn't see any large bubbles. These small bubbles are perfect. I've kept the temperature below 300 degrees Fahrenheit and it took me about 40 minutes to fry them. There is nothing quite like a freshly fried shingara with a cup of chai. try our Bengali samosa. We've also made a cup of tea. Look at that. Let's give it a try. Mm. 
looks really good. Very flaky, must be from all that ghee. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of work, uh, but totally worth it. The peanuts might be surprising, but um, they are a nice touch. This flakiness is impossible to achieve without adding the amount of ghee that we did. Great chai too. This is a very special homemade samosa with not your standard filling that would you, you would usually find in America. And usually the ones you find here, uh, the oil's too hot and it's, it's not flaky like this. They're usually pretty bland and this is completely different. Reminds me of home. See you next week. Learn how to make the chai that goes so perfectly well with this samosa in this next video.